Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I keep inside of my sparring bag. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. I get asked by new martial artists all the time, whether it's here on YouTube or by new students, what gear they need to buy in order to participate in martial arts. And my initial answer, my basic answer is nothing. You don't need anything to practice martial arts. Martial arts is about using your body. Um, having said that, um, that is when you first start martial arts. When you first start, any gear that you need will be provided for you by a good school. However, as you get into martial arts, you're going to want to start sparring. And obviously, sparring is a little bit different. You do need gear to spar effectively. You can have a light tap sparring session with somebody, but if you want to spar with any kind of contact, you're going to need the proper gear. And so I'm gonna take you through my sparring bag so you can see what a fully loaded sparring bag should look like so you can start building one of your own. So let's go ahead and start off with just kind of working around the outside of the bag. And the first thing that I always keep on me in any case is some kind of water bottle. Um, obviously water is key <laughs> to uh, having long sparring sessions. When you spar, you sweat and you need to fuel that body um, and water's the thing that's going to do it. One of my, my brother-in-law actually always says, hydrate or dehydrate. I'm not a big fan of constantly having to run to the sink or to the water fountain to get water. I like to have a water bottle that I fill up and then can keep right next to wherever I'm sparring. So in between rounds, I can take a drink and get right back at it. I'm not someone who tends to just spar for like 20 minutes and then call it a day. I usually will do about an hour to three hours worth of sparring, obviously not continuously taking breaks and breathers, discussing the spar, but uh, I work out for a while when I spar. I like to have long sessions and hydration is important. Going up to this next pocket, the other thing that's really important for me is some sort of snack. So here I just have some dry roasted peanuts. Um, in my job, I work fairly long hours of physical activity. Um, not, not necessarily long working hours, but they're long hours for someone who's doing something very physical like martial arts. Generally, I will start my day somewhere around two or three and normally end it around 10 or 11 at night. And I'm teaching martial arts that entire time. And so it's really easy for me to uh, kind of get low on fuel and need some sort of snack to refuel myself. And especially when it comes to sparring, um, I'll find myself jumping into a spar greatly malnourished and uh, recognizing that I need to take a break, need to get, get a snack, get refueled so I can get back out on the mat. I also really, I like peanuts a lot because um, if somebody has some sort of allergy, this serves as poison damage. It's a strategy. Pro strats. Okay, let's move around to the front of my bag. So there's only one thing I really uh, carry up in the front and that is a hoodie. So I've actually only been uh, incorporating this into my sparring very recently. I incorporate it for kind of two reasons. The first and the reason why like I started it is I just, I want to have a harder workout. I want to work out where I'm sweating more. I'm uh, getting my heart rate more elevated. I want to work harder and the sweater, um, helps me do that. It gets me sweating more, it gets my heart pumping. Um, so I like it for that reason. But it also is a sanitation thing um, that I teach. Once again, I teach. And sometimes even after I have a sparring session, I'll have a private lesson to teach. And so what I'll do is I spar in this as opposed to my normal like teaching gear so that when I'm done sparring, I can put on nice clean clothes as opposed to getting these all gross and sweaty. So if you're, especially if you're, so, I'm not, I don't sweat a lot. I'm not a big sweater, but if you are someone who sweats a lot, do all of your classmates a favor and spar in different clothes than you train in so that you aren't extremely gross. Don't get me wrong. I'm in the martial arts world. We're going to be you know, getting, grabbing a hold of big sweaty dudes. But like, if you're a dude who rains, like, come on, cut everyone a break, 
wear this instead. <laughs> so it can serve both as a kind of workout tool, but also as a means to just keep things sanitary in the gym. So moving on to this pocket here in my bag. Uh, it's not a lot that I keep here, that this is pretty much just two things. First is my Wing Chun sash. Um, I never wear these. My, at my school, we don't really wear our ranks very often, maybe only during testing. Uh, but if I go train with my instructor who trains uh, probably about four hours away from me, that's that's where he lives, um, I wanna make sure that I, I don't forget my sash because he does have people wear their ranks. Uh, but I, I will also say that there is a practice where we do blindfolded Chi Sao and blindfolded Randori. And so this serves as a really quick makeshift blindfold. I know for people who maybe aren't in Wing Chun or um, aren't in Judo, that probably sounds like crazy magic stuff, but it's actually really easy once you've trained in the art a little bit and it helps kind of develop your sense of feel in the fight. The other thing that is a must have in your sparring gear is a mouthpiece. So this is probably an area where I neglect the most as far as my sparring. Uh, I have a really bad habit of getting on the mat without a mouthpiece because I am oftentimes teaching, I'm oftentimes coaching, I'm oftentimes, you know, praising and correcting my students. And so I'm talking. So I obviously don't have my mouthpiece in because it's, it's, I don't, I won't speak as clearly to them, but the problem is that I will oftentimes end up, you know, just hopping on the mat without it. A common misconception about mouthpieces is that they stop people from knocking your teeth in. Um, first and foremost is you shouldn't be sparring so hard that someone could knock your teeth in. So let me just get that out of the way. The point of sparring is not to hurt your partner, but rather to have shown your partner that you could have hurt them. So you aren't, think about like, you should be hitting like 30%, not 100%. You wanna keep your spars fairly light if you're going to um, you know, keep friends in the gym. But um, also if somebody hits you hard enough to knock out your teeth, a piece of rubber isn't going to stop that from happening. What the mouthpiece does is it prevents you from chipping your teeth. And also something my dentist pointed out was that a mouthpiece also helps hold your jaw in place when you're sparring so that there's less movement in your jaw, which then minimizes the damage not only to your jaw, but also helps minimize like head rotation and things and preventing you from getting concussions. So a mouthpiece is not just for your teeth, it's for your entire head. There's two kinds of mouthpieces out there. There's a one-sided mouthpiece, only covers the top, and two-sided on both. To be blunt, um, I don't really like sparring with the double-sided mouthpiece because it's like you're breathing through a straw and so there's not a lot of oxygen intake and I find that pretty exhausting. But my dentist does recommend the double mouthpiece over the single. Um, so it's up to you whether you're willing to put up with the sucking your air through a straw and increase the um, effectiveness of your mouthpiece or if the single is just good enough for you. That's between you and your dentist, not between me and you. So let's go ahead and look into the major part of the bag. This is the good stuff. So that was the basics, right? So this is the good stuff. We're getting into uh, what I actually spar with. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. Okay, so first thing I have on top is my judo gi with my belt. Um, so um, for starters, for the people who do a lot of martial arts, you may be looking at this and go, Michael, that's a black gi, so therefore it's not a judo gi, that's for jujitsu. And I say, if I do judo in it, it's a judo gi. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, so I do judo. Um, I do do Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well, but I primarily do judo. Um, but I like the black gi from just a stylistic standpoint. I also study Kenpo, and Kenpo is a black gi art. Of course, when I'm sparring at my gym, I can wear whatever color I want, and I like to wear the black because that represents Kenpo. In particular, the um, brand that I really like is I like, I don't know if you can see that, is Fuji. Um, they make this gi that has basically no branding on it. You can see how light that Fuji actually is. The whole gi's branding looks like that. I'm not a big fan of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gi's that make you look like a NASCAR, uh, where there's just tons of patches all over the place. That's not my jam. I like a nice, clean, simple gi. Uh, the only markings that I have on my gi is our school logo. Um, that's it. 
So I'll put my gi over here, boom. Obviously, oh wait, no, I'm so not done talking about the gi. Um, so I, I like to grapple in the gi because there's a lot of things that you learn when you grapple in the gi. When I first started studying martial arts, particularly when I first started getting into judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I kind of didn't like the gi because I thought, you know, no one wears a, a gi in the streets, right? But that's actually really dumb because yes, they do. Everyone wears a gi in the streets. I'll explain that in a second. But moreover, no one wears rash guards in the streets or are running around shirtless attacking you in the streets. Generally, if you're defending yourself, if you're in a street fight or a self-defense situation, one of the two, remember they aren't the same, um, there's probably gonna be clothes involved. <laughs> you guys probably aren't fighting naked. So actually no gi jujitsu is less realistic than gi jujitsu. The gi is more street than no gi. Um, and when you start training in the gi, you start to realize how much your clothing can be used against you and how much you can use someone's clothing against them. Also, um, I am in my mid thirties. I like the gi because it kind of slows the grappling game down a little bit, makes it a little bit more, uh, less about the explosive athleticism and a little bit more strategic, a little bit more of a chess game. I'm not saying that I'm old in my mid thirties, but I am saying I'm not 20. I'm not 20, that's for sure. And so I also like the gi just for that case as well. Um, I also enjoy just having a lot of access to a lot of different tools and the gi, there's so many more submissions and, um, techniques that you can do with a gi, and so it just makes the game a lot more enjoyable for me. So let's move on to the next thing that I have in here, which are my shin pads. So these are just some Rev Gear shin pads. These are the sock style shin pads. Um, I am a, I, 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 I oftentimes will neglect to put my shin pads on, and I oftentimes will regret neglecting to put my shin pads on. It just is one of those things that you can't throw it on really quickly. And so I'll forget to put my shin pads on and then uh, somebody will check one of my kicks and it will hurt really bad. Um, in my school, we teach a thing we call destruction blocks. And the idea of a destruction block is that when a kick is coming in towards you, you block it in a way either with your elbow or with your knee that actually like hurts them to kick you. Because I teach that, my students do that. And so when I'm sparring, especially at my school, everyone's trying to do destruction blocks. And even when you're sparring really lightly, those destruction blocks still hurt. And so the shin pads help kind of cushion my shins against that blow. Um, I also find that they do soften my kicks a little bit as well. There is a big difference between how people respond to my kicks when I'm wearing shin pads and not. I really like the sock style like this as opposed to the Velcro style for two reasons. Uh, first is I despise replacing gear just because the Velcro went bad. So any chance I have to get away from Velcro, I take because like I said, I don't like replacing gear just because Velcro went bad. But I also find that the stuff that kind of Velcros around your calf tends to shift and move and fall off your foot and all sorts of stuff. Whereas this sock style tends to stay in place really, really well. So that's why I like this particular kind of shin pad. So let's see here, what else do I got in here? So um, I also have my Kempo belt in here. Um, once again, we don't really wear our ranks outside of testing. I will occasionally close my gi with this as opposed to my judo belt. And that's just because I kind of want to get this thing worn down and make it look like an old school karate belt. And I don't want to buy one of those cheap, stupid karate belts that are already worn, worn down. You know, I want it to get its wear the old fashioned way. So sometimes I'll close my gi with this just to, <laughs> just to, uh, you know, keep it cool. All right. So let's look at. Um, this is probably what most of you guys were waiting for, right? It's going to be what gloves do I like to spar with? Well, the first kind is these guys. Um, so these are just standard boxing gloves. These are by Hayabusa. Um, I really like the Hayabusa brand. Um, they are more expensive than I would like them to be, but they are of extremely high quality and they are honestly worth the money. These particular ones, I, uh, are their like Italian leather, you know, fancy design. Um, this is one of their higher ends. I like these a lot cause they have this, this double wrist strap. So it 
locks over this way and it locks over this way, which is awesome. Um, I don't spar with boxing gloves very often because they don't give me access to all of the tools that I use in my school. So in my school, we do punches, kicks, knees, elbows, but we also do trapping techniques, we do grappling techniques, and obviously there are plenty of grappling techniques and trapping techniques that you just can't do with boxing gloves. I also find that boxing gloves kind of give a false sense of security because I can just kind of hold the gloves like this and generally I'm safe, right? If I just keep my gloves up, but with my actual fist, that does not keep me safe. And, um, or like I can block just by putting my hand up beside my head because the glove is so big. And obviously that would not be an effective block in real life. But I think it's good to have boxing gloves for two major reasons. First, if you're having harder spars. As I said earlier in this video, the point of sparring is not to hurt your partner, but rather to show them you could have hurt them. But sometimes you do wanna have a harder spar with somebody, and these make that harder spar a little bit more viable. Um, also, most of the gyms that I go to outside of my own, um, they don't spar with anything but boxing gloves, so it's just important to have some. Inside the boxing gloves, these are awesome. I think these are really great. Um, what is this, what is this? Uh, Meister, these are Meister, uh, but basically they're smelly good bags. But these are feel, filled with kind of an antibacterial material that I can shove in here. It can absorb the sweat, keep things clean on the inside, keep my gloves smelling really, really nice. Um, so those are my boxing gloves. So what do I usually spar with? Well, I usually spar with these guys. These are hybrid gloves. So they're kind of like mixed martial arts gloves, but they have a nice thick padding on the outside. Um, I don't believe in that MMA gloves are sparring gloves. If the only reason why you should buy mixed martial arts gloves is if you are um, about to get into a mixed martial arts fight, but even then, most promotions provide you with the gloves that they want you to use. So I don't really know why people would buy mixed martial arts gloves. Um, mixed martial arts gloves do not cushion your punches against your opponent. And so as a result, they are not sparring gloves. Anyways, I like uh, these Hayabusa uh, hybrid gloves because they allow me to have full access to all my tools. So not only can I do my punches, but I can also do trapping techniques and I can grab, so I can do any of my grappling techniques. And because it has sufficient padding on top, um, it allows me to strike safely without hurting, uh, risking the injury to my partner. These are also great because they have that double locking design. So it gives you that a lot of additional wrist support if that's something that you're looking for. Um, and because they are the size of my hand, I get a more realistic sense of defensive techniques. So um, I get to practice blocking or defending in a way that would actually work if I wasn't wearing gloves. Uh, but probably about 80 to 90% of the time I spar, I'm wearing these hybrid gloves. And the last thing that I have in my bag is uh, some grappling shoes. Um, these are things I don't see a lot of people use in the martial arts world, but I think they're actually pretty important. So the vast majority of the time, if I'm grappling, I'm doing it barefoot. I'm not wearing any kind of grappling shoe. However, grappling shoes help prevent injury as well as help you recover from injury. A really common mistake that I've made and I think most martial artists have made, and if you've not made it yet, you probably will in the future, is that you'll get injured in some fashion, like you'll break your toe, and then when it's the injury stops hurting, you get right back on the mat and then you injure yourself. You re-injure that injury um, because generally your body stops hurting before the injury is fully healed. It's kind of like it stops hurting when that injury is good enough. And so what this can be used for, what I use these for is to keep my injuries safe. My, like if I break a toe, um, once my toe feels better, I'll still probably take two weeks to a month of sparring with these on just to ensure that I was healed completely. I also think that these offer an interesting education in grappling because they have this additional grip on the bottom like shoes have, and it actually changes the game um, a, lot, a lot more than I thought that it would. One thing I wanna make really clear for anybody who's just getting into sparring, you don't necessarily need all of this. 
Um, this is just a complete sparring bag that lets me train anything that I want to train very quickly. Um, when you first get started, you need water, you need a mouthpiece, and you need some sort of striking gloves. Like I said, those, it, those hybrid gloves are really good. I'm also planning to make a similar video just like this one, but instead talking about what I keep inside of my Kali bag. So what I use for Filipino martial arts. So if you're interested in seeing that video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notifications when I release another video. But of course, if you've made it to the end of this video, you're clearly enjoying the content. So why wouldn't you subscribe to the channel? Also, if you live in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train with me, all the information you need to do so is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. And if you don't live in my area and you'd still like to train with me, we do have weekly Zoom classes on Wednesdays that all the information you need to get signed up for that, once again, is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.